Hello everybody, welcome to another little story and this time we're going to have a bit of a nautical theme. Now the challenge always is when you're looking at the either cars or bikes or boats is where do you start? You go by the fastest, the most expensive one or you go what's the most interesting one? Well, this time it's actually the most challenging boat. The Star International was originally designed and built in 1911, and uh, it was into went in the entered into the Olympics since 1932 until 2012, and over 75 7,500. Boats were built over a hundred years, so it's uh, quite a prestigious racing boat, and uh, it's that's what made it so challenging because it had all kinds of settings and adjustments, and it was designed for racing. Jules and I, and Jules is the original owner of the boat. We used to sail it in Hamilton Harbor. Now, one of the unique features of this boat is that like you have to lift it out after you sail it, so there's always a little crane. Now, the challenge always was we had no motor, so we had to sail in close and uh, maneuver the boat so we get uh, get to the pier and underneath the crane. So it was a challenge. Unfortunately, uh, Jules had a heart attack that he did not survive, so we still miss him. I did not keep the boat in Hamilton. I ended up going to uh, Marina Grimsby, which meant that I had to attach a little electric motor to get in and out the channel. And uh, it was a bit of a trick to put it together, but I designed it and got a welder to put it together and uh, work quite well. And you see this channel just wasn't wide enough to be able to try to sail. I tried it once, ended up on the rocks, the mass ended up in the tree, so. But uh, here's me getting started on it out in the lake there and it looks like uh, look a little forlorn. Where's my helper? Oh, got it going getting to get started there. Ah, that's more like it. The boat was uh, very sensitive and didn't take much to tip it. It was a hands-on boat. Basically, both hands are always busy. Ah, there we go. Moving right along. It was definitely a fun boat, but it was also challenging because I sailed mostly by myself to uh, get out there. But I had good company with all the cormorants. I probably wonder how it all got started. Well, my cousin Nelson, uh, about 55 years ago, he had a sunfish and he also taught me how to sail the sunfish and uh, windsurfing so he got me going on that boat now you might laugh and say well sunfish is a little boat but the uh, the fastest i ever sailed speed wise was with the sunfish i used to put it in Asperger's bay and then we uh, i would sail over a couple of um, one weekend i sailed over to to Toronto Harbor, and then the storm came up, and uh, as I sailed back to Ashbridge's Bay, I was on a broad reach, and uh, the wind was just whipping along, and I was just hanging on, and I don't know how fast it was going, but I never since then I've been going as fast. So might be small and mighty, but if you get the right conditions, you really can move. 
Well, the next boat was a fireball, which was uh, quite quick, and uh, quite a bit bigger than the uh, sunfish, but also had his challenges, and I'm sure the kids can tell you a few stories how things went and didn't go well. When we lived in Peterborough, I met this fellow who had a sailing school, and he had uh, some lasers, but after he just taught in... Uh, May and June, and for the rest of summer, he didn't need the boats, so uh, I was always had the opportunity to use his laser, and uh, it was a fun boat. And yes, uh, it had those moments when you kind of wish you had somebody else help with the counterweight. In the fall of 2016, I started scouting around for a boat that was not as uh, unforgiving in terms of keeping it upright and uh, I was thought maybe I'll uh, be a more comfortable ride because I'm getting the age where I was hanging over the sides wasn't exactly. So anyway, I found a boat up uh, near Aurelia in uh, Lake Simcoe and of course then we had to decide how we're going to get it back down Lake Ontario. So we decided that we were not going to have a truck down, we're going to sail it down. So one way to do it is you get your brother from Calgary to help you out. And here we are just about ready to go. Now we had to go from Hawkesbury on the west side of Lake Simcoe and then all the way to all the different lakes, all the way down to uh, Trenton, Ontario. Well, here we are ready to go. Of course, we didn't have the mast up because we had to go under bridges, etc. So Karen is uh, taking the van back and uh, we're blowing her goodbye. As I was sitting out in the middle of the lake and uh, cruising along, except the engine could just quit. Now here you have two Swiss guys who grew up in a carrot patch in Switzerland and didn't really know what to do next. Well, no fear, put our thinking cap and uh, decided, well, troubleshoot, troubleshoot. And sure enough, but it was, it was uh, the, the fuel line because we, the tank had a little valve that replaced the air as you suck out the fuel, which we didn't open. So well, but once we opened that up, we we're good to go. So, on we went. Well, here we meet our first obstacle. Got a little swing bridge, and uh, George and I were rather anxious, wondering what, how it's going to go, but they weren't okay. And here's our first lock. Now, the whole system, we had to go through 41 different locks. You can see, you're looking back towards Lake Simcoe, and there's like a terrace step down. And uh, now the the whole Trent Canal that we went on was about 290 kilometers or equivalent of 180 miles. And the Trent Canal was actually started construction 1833. It was completed in 1920. And here we're where the highest point was at that lift lock in Kirkfield. And we stayed overnight. A lot of these places actually had a camping facility. Well, you stayed in a boat, but they had washrooms and showers and sometimes even a little kitchenette where you could cook in it. But, well, we're now going into the lift lock. That's quite the uh, experience. Because as you go up and you look out the back and say, holy where it won't even hope it's just the uh, gate doesn't open up because otherwise you're uh, you're done. So we survived and we're moving on. And there was this cruise boat that actually is taking cruises up the Rideau Canal, but he's, he said that he couldn't go up the Rideau Canal because uh, the water was too high. And here is one of those quote-unquote cottages. 
and we're moving on to some of the bigger lakes and the Kortha area going underneath a, a bridge, one of the smaller towns. Out the other end, actually quite lucky with the weather. Now here's a cottager that knows how to avoid the traffic. Just get your own little plane and uh, go there. Some are, have quite extensive uh, gazebos. Now this guy is quite a fancy boat lift. In some areas, a little more boat traffic than others. Now this guy is living in style. If you're in a hurry, you get the speedboat, and otherwise you just putt-putt along with your houseboat. Now I was ready for a party. Oh, this looks like it's a giant garage for boats, and I like that they actually put solar panels on top. Coming to another lock. Now we're in Buckhorn. Moving on, weather's holding up for us. It was actually quite challenging to make sure we were in the right channel. And also we had to watch the depth of the water because uh, with a four foot keel, if you uh, hit shallow ground, you're in trouble. And there's a bit of a side creek or river coming in. Now uh, that those clouds start to look a little bit ominous. So hopefully uh, it's not as serious as it looks. Now this guy has quite the setup for his docks. I guess one of the reasons you do that is to avoid the uh, ice in the winter. And now we're coming to Young's Point, which is just uh, north of Peterborough. And uh, we're told that's it. The lockmaster wouldn't let us go through. He said, well, you can't go further because the water's too fast. Well, there's a little muskrat there I, I noticed in the morning he was running around and uh, so I got a little picture of him. So we um, ended up having to stay there for a few days because we couldn't carry on until the higher authorities gave us the go ahead. And this is the other boat, they're already there when we get there and uh, we ended up doing the rest of the journey kind of as a team. This is looking down from the lock to where we're supposed to go where you can see it's quite fast water so they didn't want us to take a chance and this is the dam on the west side or on the other side here's the mechanism how they open, uh, raise and lower the gates for the, for the uh, dam so they can control the water while well, it's Time went on, more boats showed up, and uh, actually it was kind of funny because it was kind of a tricky way to get into it. And uh, so it was a bit of a challenge with everybody not getting smacked. Anyway, it looks like we're ready to go, and we're uh, heading down river now. I think we stayed there uh, four days, and they, even the lockmaster gave us a uh, a ride into town to get some groceries, which was very nice of him. Well, another lock, and you see the person there, they all had to crank this gate open. 
that was rather funny, but that's why I guess they hired young people, they can do that. Looks like a bit of a contested area here. And all along we had some Canada geese here and there. Moving on down towards Peterborough now. Well, we're back on the lift lock, looking out over the water, or I should say over the landscape. Now it is looking straight down into, down below, uh, for the, I guess it's the other lift because they balance each other out. So it was quite fascinating going through the lock. And it gives you a little bit of a diagram that shows you how the whole thing works. It just looks like it's just a piston that's one as it comes out lifts the other one up. And even some of the locks still got the old cranks there. Who knows how old those wheels are, but still in use. Well now we're in Peterborough and uh, stopping for the night on a little town lake. Onwards we go. And then now we're going down on the uh, Tonneby River. We had a bit of a glitch there with the uh, fuel again, and we ended up drifting for a while, but it was okay, we got it fixed. Here we're in Rice Lake, it's a very shallow lake, and uh, weather's holding up. As you can see, we're now out of the quarth areas. We're into more of a farm farm district. And now we're in Hastings. And uh, guess what? We're stopped again. Can't go further. Well, after, uh, I think it was almost a week, we end up going home because we just didn't want to stick around. We finally got out and moved on. Now this lock here has actually, I think it's Healy Falls, it had three locks in a row. And you can see why the uh, we had to go with the locks because a lot of uh, rapids. You me looking back, you see on the left side how there's no way you could navigate that. And I guess in the olden days when they decided to build this Trent Canal system that was sort of at that time the highways to haul the goods from Lake Ontario up to uh, the Upper Lakes. And here's uh, an eagle that decided uh, to uh, make a nest up there. Well, we're now in Campbellford. And it's more and more uh, urban areas. See the school buses uh, waiting for their turn. I think this is one of the last few locks. Uh, so I got the young folks cranking the, the operator there, open up and close the gates. Once in a while he had some company, swans. And this looks like an old railroad bridge that got abandoned. Ominous clouds again. But uh, we're tied up ready to settle down for the night anyway. Next morning we carry on. Looks like somebody coming the other way. And here's last lock before the one before the four oh one you can see the highway in the background. 
Well, we made it. We're now in lock number one, which will be, of course, be coming the other way. So 41 locks later, we finally made it to the last one, and we're out. And you see how high the, the lake is even. The, uh, the pier on the left side of the water is right over the edge. Now you got, looks like, one more bridge behind us. And we're now in actually in Lake Ontario. Uh, we were able to get a slip. The uh, Air Force Base, they got their own little yacht club there and they were kind enough to let us use the facility. And now it's time to get the mast up, which is a bit of a production. Good thing we had other help. There you go, sunrise with the mast. Hallelujah, we're ready for the big times now. Well, we had to go through Bay of Quinte and then up to the Murray Canal. Leaving the last bridge behind us. Of course, that's a swing bridge. They had to open it up for us. So you can see on the map is Bay of Quinte and the Murray Canal. And that brings us over to, right into uh, Lake Ontario. And then from there we sail along the North Shore to Toronto and then from Toronto across the lake to Grimsby. So here we are. We're now on Lake Ontario. We're into big times now. We uh, pull into Coburg, a beautiful uh, marina and uh, well equipped and it's actually right downtown and here we, we are motoring along not enough ink to sail so what do you think is on his mind i think he's probably thinking at lunchtime yet anyway we motored on and uh, the weather got a little cooler and this is uh the shore is quite a cliffs there and uh, we finally ended up in the port of Newcastle so our friends were gonna keep their boat and that's where we stay for the night as well and uh, it was a bit of a mess because the water was uh, flooding everything even the gazebo there looks a little bit rickety So we carried on, and uh, I think this was Whitby. We pulled in Whitby. We had to get some gas. I think we sort of didn't have a big enough tank. We had to stop quite frequently. George on the tiller, and he's probably wondering, when are we going to get there? Well, we still have a ways to go. Well. Time for a nap. It's my turn to run the tiller. Well, out of the fog, we'll see the big city coming up. It's funny how those cormorants just like to fly in a row. Now we're in the harbor. And uh, luckily it's not the weekend because that place gets pretty busy with all kinds of boats. As we exit the uh, Toronto Harbor, we went out the Western Channel. And then out to our left was the uh, airport, the small island airport. There was also some big boats in there. I guess it's just more like a restaurant at the waterfront. Now we're heading out towards Mimico where we stay tonight. One last look back to the big city. And then we stayed there and San Ho and the girls came to visit us. We had a nice dinner together, a little picnic dinner. 
And the next day we sailed off to uh, Grimsby and it was actually quite rough, but we survived. We ended up in Grimsby, in a rough site. Actually, some of the waves were probably uh, six or eight feet because whenever we were in a trough of a well, wave, we couldn't see the shore, so it tells you it's quite deep. But we made it, and we lived to tell the story. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll see you out on the lake one day. <laughs>